So in today's episode of Stop for Garage, I'm gonna show you guys how I repair curb rash and scratches, and these wheels and tires definitely need some help. We're gonna make them look like new by the end of this video. So if you guys are new, hit the subscribe button down below, give this video a thumbs up, and let's go ahead and get started. Now obviously the first thing to do is get the wheels off the car. You can do them on the car. I prefer not to just because of the overspray when you paint them. And it's always best just to remove the wheels and do it that way. Now when you do jack up your car, make sure you use jack stands, safety methods to always support your vehicle. And then go ahead and remove the lug nuts and get those wheels off. But also at the end of this video, guys, make sure you don't miss out on the preview of this Saturday's upcoming video. It's gonna be an amazing one. You guys are gonna love it. So make sure you set your notifications so you don't miss out on those videos. Now we're gonna be using all-purpose cleaner to clean the wheels and you can use wheel cleaner, whatever you have. And then I'm using my bristle brushes to kind of get into all those little grooves and niches in the side of the uh, lug nut holes before we go ahead and rinse it off and then follow up with a Dawn dish soap bath. And the main reason why we're using Dawn dish soap is because it removes all the oily grease and stuff like that that's on the wheels before we get to the sanding stage. Now, while the wheels are out drying in the sun, I'm gonna show you guys the products that I use to do this job. And I picked up all these advanced auto parts, but the first things that you guys are gonna need is you're gonna need sandpaper. And I have 220 grit, 400 grit, 800 grit, 1000 grit sandpaper. And then we have the spreaders, which these are used for the Bondo reinforced metal filler here. And then I have my wheel paint, which is silver. And then I have the clear coat, which is a gloss clear coat spray. Also, the big thing is don't forget about the primer. And then we have our tack cloth, which is used to pick up any dust before we paint. Now for the sandpaper, I always tear it into halves and you wanna do this several times. So you get about, you know, monopoly size, dollar size pieces because you're gonna be working around the wheel in small areas and having a big cumbersome piece of sandpaper is kind of a pain in the butt. So small pieces is always better and you're doing a lot of the grunt work with this 220 grit. And to be honest, you can do this by hand. I I did most of this wheel, the single wheel by hand, but then later on, I'll show you guys a little bit of a faster method. I just wanted to go in and show you guys that you can do this without expensive tools. It's just, you're gonna have to put in the elbow grease to get the job done. Now, while I'm doing this job, because it is so time consuming, I'm definitely rocking out some old punk rock music. Blink-182, thank you for uh, making me feel old. But um, yeah. Definitely put on some music, podcasts, whatever you guys got. Listen to Stop for Garage videos. Just something to kill the time because you are going to need to uh, put in a couple hours to get all of the area completely leveled. Now for one of the faster methods, and there's different ways you can do this, but to be honest, a Dremel is most accessible to a lot of people. So you can get these little sanding discs. You wanna work slowly, work at a medium to low speed. Less is more in this case, because honestly you can gouge them pretty deeply, which you don't want to do. Remember the main goal of using the Dremel is to knock out the high spots, to knock out any of those tinier pits and level the entire surface before then you follow up with your sandpaper. The main tip that I can give you guys is just take your time if you're using a Dremel tool or if you're using any sort of air tools whatsoever. Just take your time, work your way around the wheel, and level all those high spots. Also, these 
fudge cookies are honestly probably the best thing to be eating right now because you're gonna need the energy and the sugar to keep that sandpaper moving. Now just using a microfiber towel, wipe away all the dust, kind of get a good look at how much work you've done, see where you need to do additional work. This is a good opportunity to look for those low spots and those deep divots inside the wheel that you're not gonna wanna dremel any further because you don't wanna completely remove a ton of material. You're trying to take off as least amount as possible. And if you find spots that are deep, this is where you're gonna definitely be using that Bondo filler later on. Now that we've dremeled the entire face of the wheel, now that we've de now that we've dremeled all the scratches on the wheel, it's now time to follow up with that 220 grit again. And this is where you're kind of blending those deeper cut marks that you made with the dremel and the outside paint that isn't scratched and making sure it is a smooth transition between the two. Now that you've smoothed out and leveled the scratches that you made with your Dremel tool or your sandpaper, you need to make sure you scuff up the rest of the faces and the rest of the painted surface on the wheel, so that way the primer has something to catch onto and seal to. Now it's time to give it another Dawn dish soap bath. And the main goal here is to remove all of that sanding dust, all of that oil and stuff on the wheel face itself because now it is time to apply that Bondo metal filler before we sand it down one more time and then apply our primer coat. Now, if you've never worked with Bondo or Epoxy, you're gonna have your main substance inside the can that you're gonna put onto your surface, but then you're gonna be adding droplets of a hardener. And the hardener is what's gonna cause it to cure fast and harden to it whatever surface you're trying to apply it to. So you have about two to three minutes of working time once you've folded in this hardener, but make sure you're not stirring it, you're kind of folding it over like you're kneading it like dough. And the main reason is you're not trying to add bubbles to the surface, you're trying to make sure it is a solid paste without any air bubbles. Now I really don't have any tips when it comes to applying this stuff to it. You're kind of just gonna be adding it to the surface. You're gonna be filling in any of the holes, any of those low spots. Make sure you smooth out as much as possible, but also leave excess on top of those gouges. That way you're not removing too much of the Bondo. Now this is what it looks like applied and it is already hardened by the time I did these after shots. It only takes two to three minutes. And then I wait an additional five minutes before following up with my 220 grit sandpaper to begin removing any excess Bondo, leveling out this entire surface again with those gouges and those deeper holes completely filled. Now 
Now after the 220, we are gonna hit the rest of the wheel and the entire face of it with 400 grit. And this is the final sanding that we're gonna be doing before we apply our primer coat. Now it's time to start priming the wheels and what we're gonna be using is index cards to fill between the rim and the tire so we don't spray onto the tire itself. But when you apply your first coat of primer, apply it lightly, but you have about 10 minutes in between each coat to dry before you can apply an additional coat. Now with the second coat completely dry after about an additional 10 to 20 minutes, I'm gonna be using my 800 grit and 1000 grit sandpaper to completely sand the surface of the wheel, remove any high spots on the primer, any air bubbles that might've gotten to the surface or any dust because we are doing this outside. And by doing this, you're gonna make sure that when you play your final paint coat, you have that shiny glossy finish that you're looking for. Now to clean up any dust on the surface from the sanding, I'm just using a tack cloth to completely wipe down the face before we apply that first coat of paint. Now for the paint stage, I'm gonna be applying three total coats to it with 10 minutes in between each coat. Now for the clear coat, you can either use a gloss or a matte. Just try to match what your other wheels have. In this case, I'm gonna be using the gloss clear coat and I'm gonna be doing three coats as well. Now about 20 minutes after the final clear coat spray, I'm gonna be removing all of the index cards and then I'm using a bristle brush and this is gonna be used to just scrub the face of the wheel lightly. You do get some overspray. Then I'm gonna be wiping the surface off completely with a microfiber towel. Now when you put the wheels back on the car, you need to be very conscious that the paint is not completely cured. It usually takes a full 24 hours for it to completely dry. So I'm being overly cautious here. I'm trying to take my time, but if you can keep them off the car, but in most cases, I know most people don't have that opportunity, me included. But one thing to do is take your lug nut wrench, wrap it with some masking tape or any sort of soft tape. So that way when you're putting on the lug nuts, you're not gonna scratch the inside of those wheel lug nut holes. Now with the car back on the ground and the lug nuts tightened, it's time to review these before and after shots. And these rims turned out amazing. They look like brand new again. And I've been wanting to do this for a long time. And if you guys follow these steps as well, you guys can make your wheels look like brand new again. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Make sure you hit the subscribe button down below. And I'll see you guys in the next video.